Hi everyone, I'm Ned Belavance, a cloud developer advocate at Linode, and today I wanted to talk about a contentious topic, whether or not to pursue a multi-cloud strategy. You've probably read blogs and opinion pieces that either advocate heavily for multi-cloud everywhere or warn about the extreme dangers of implementing such a strategy. And I would argue that the truth is far more nuanced than that and relies heavily on your use case and application. But before we dive too deep into the topic, it would probably be helpful to define what multi-cloud is, since I think that is part of the confusion surrounding the topic. There are three possible definitions of multi-cloud that come to my mind. Number one is an organization is using different clouds for different applications. Number two is an organization is using multiple clouds for instances of the same application. And number three, an organization is using multiple different clouds for different components of the same application. You could also include a fourth definition that would be using SaaS offerings from multiple clouds like Office 365, Salesforce, and Workday. While that could technically be called multi-cloud, I'm going to restrict my definition to running in-house applications on infrastructure as a service or platform as a service. It's fairly common these days to see companies of significant size running different applications in different clouds. Often this arose due to separate business units selecting the cloud that works best for them or through mergers and acquisitions. I've personally seen several companies that were all Azure and suddenly they have an AWS presence after they bought another company. A less common pattern is to write your in-house applications in such a way that they can run in multiple clouds. This is especially important to organizations that would like to offer software as a service and they're worried about lock-in or have concerns about global availability. In some cases, you have no choice but to keep your customers' data in-country. Take CloudNet's multi-cloud strategy, for example. After starting in a Linode data center in London, CloudNet needed to include data centers in Frankfurt and Newark based on their customers' primary audiences and data sovereignty requirements. So that is a good example. The last definition is a pattern I've started seeing more often, which is to place components of an application in different clouds, depending on the services that are available in each cloud. The adoption of loosely coupled distributed application architecture enables this type of separation especially when you break an application into microservices that interact through APIs. There are several pundits and technologists warning about the danger of adopting multi-cloud, and you know what? they have some valid objections. Why don't we talk about those objections and examine when they might be correct and when they can be safely ignored. The first common objection is that multi-cloud increases complexity. On its surface, that seems correct. Adding a second cloud to the mix is going to increase complexity. My counter argument is that adding anything beyond basic infrastructure as a service in a cloud adds complexity. As someone who has used the various PaaS offerings across multiple clouds, I can tell you that PaaS management and setup varies wildly within the same cloud. If you're already thinking about adopting database as a service and serverless and object storage, you've already decided to increase the complexity of your application. Adding another cloud to the mix it actually isn't going to make that much of a difference. In addition, if you're breaking your application into services that are offered through an API, then the various components of your application don't really care about the architecture of the other services as long as the API is consistent. The next common objection is an increase in spending and cost management. Adding multiple clouds makes it harder to track your spending and optimize for cost. That's certainly true, but you know what else makes it harder to track your spending? Having multiple accounts or subscriptions in the same cloud. Chances are, if you have that problem, you've already invested in a third-party service or application that can track your spending across multiple accounts. Now, all of those services also support multiple clouds, so it's 
pretty straightforward to add a second or third cloud to the mix. You might actually be able to save on costs by optimizing your architecture to take advantage of the least cost service in different clouds. For instance, it might be cheaper to run your main application on Kubernetes clusters in Linode and have your big data analysis in Azure so you can take advantage of Azure hybrid licensing. Another thing to bear in mind, not every cloud is as challenging as the big three to track your expenses. Linode makes it simple to understand your costs and produces a bill you can actually read without an actuarial degree. Another big area of concern is increased administrative overhead. Adding another cloud means making your administrators and ops folks learn and manage another cloud. That is 100% true. Your ops and admin folks are going to have to learn another cloud. And the secret is that they probably already have. Like I mentioned before, most companies of significant size are already running in multiple clouds, whether they meant to or not. Your internal IT department will likely build up teams that specialize in one cloud or another. That is not really all that different than the separation of duties you commonly see between Windows and Linux teams in traditional shops. Change is the one constant in technology and learning is a natural extension of that change. The lowest common denominator argument is another one I often hear. If you decide to deploy your application across multiple clouds, you can only adopt the lowest common features and services in each cloud, and that defeats the purpose of moving to the cloud, right? I believe that is the wrong way to look at multi-cloud. Yes, if you plan to deploy exactly the same application across all the clouds, you do have to adhere to the most common components. And in that case, you will rely on IaaS or Kubernetes as a service to provide your common platform. But if you really want to take advantage of the best services and features the cloud has to offer, then you would want to go multi-cloud, wouldn't you? A key differentiator between the clouds are some of the more specialized services each cloud carries. By limiting yourself to a single cloud, you are also limiting yourself to the best of what that single cloud has to offer. Finally, there is a concern that no one else is doing multi-cloud and your company doesn't want to be the first to dive in. Fortunately, that is simply not the case. Linode has several examples of companies successfully utilizing multi-cloud to grow and drive their business. To help illustrate this point and provide examples of different approaches, I will be highlighting some of those examples in future videos. Keep an eye out for those because I think you might find them eye-opening. As a preview, let me tell you about Mineral. Andy Christiawan, founder and COO of Mineral, used Amazon and DigitalOcean for his company's cloud infrastructure. As an experiment, he moved one of Mineral's clients to Linode's Singapore data center. The Mineral team quickly realized that Linode outperformed its competitors when it came to speed, ease of use, and cost. Mineral now puts Linode at the front of a multi-cloud strategy. As Andy explains it, quote, a lot of our customers don't realize they have alternatives to big name cloud vendors. Linode's technology, performance, and price give them an option for their cloud infrastructure. For us, Linode is our primary choice." End quote. Thanks for taking the time with me today. I'd love to hear your thoughts and experience with multi-cloud. You can reach out to me via Twitter, Ned1313, or leave a comment in this video. We're just scratching the surface on how businesses are taking advantage of the alternative cloud in their infrastructure. Make sure to subscribe to the channel now so you can follow along as we deep dive into why the alternative cloud makes sense for your business.